Welcome to First United Methodist Church in Sweetwater. I miss you being here as much as you miss being here. I'm thankful for this technology and social media that we can connect this way. When you think the world is spinning out of control as it seems to be right now, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Jesus, 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 there is something about that name. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but the kingdom of God is forever. Let us pray. God, we live in a fallen and broken, sinful world. We are in the midst of a global pandemic. Hearts are filled with anxiety and fear. Yet we know that you are our God. We find refuge in you. Our prayer is that you will bring healing to the world. Healing to our land. We pray that this pandemic will end and you will restore life. There are people who are hanging on to life. There are people who have died from the coronavirus. There are people who are deathly sick. And there are people who fear getting this disease, this virus. God, you bring healing. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will come upon us now and calm our hearts and fill us with your love and with your joy and with your assurance that you are always with us and that you will never leave us or forsake us. In the name of Jesus, we pray.
those beautiful songs fill our hearts with hope and peace and remind us that God holds us in his hands. Hear this affirmation of faith from Romans. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Life has changed tremendously in a short span of time. The governor issued a stay-at-home order. We're not meeting in church buildings. School has been canceled. Students are doing their homework online. After the Sunday morning worship service, we can't go to our favorite restaurant. They're closed except for takeout orders. I was watching the news and a journalist interviewed a celebrity hairstylist. And he was giving tips on how you can Cut your hair at home. <laughs> if you do that, would you please take a picture of before and after and post it on social media? I would love to see how that turns out. <laughs> Have you remembered that today is Palm Sunday? With everything that's going on, you may have lost count of these days of Lent. We gathered on Ash Wednesday, I have a bulletin from Ash Wednesday, February the 26th, and we gathered and people received the imposition of ashes. On the first Sunday in Lent, we gathered in the church and we celebrated communion. And we gathered again on the second Sunday in Lent. And it was during that week that Bishop Taylor in the cabinet of Holston Conference issued a mandate saying worship services would be suspended for two weeks. Well, after two weeks, everyone was hoping by the fifth Sunday in Lent, we would be back together worshiping. And we received another mandate saying worship services would be suspended until further notice. And now it's Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. This morning, I want to share these words from the Gospel of Mark that tells of Jesus' triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. Mark chapter 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a tie, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it. And he will send the donkey back immediately. They went away and they found a colt tied near a door outside the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, Hey, what are you doing? And they said, The Lord needs the donkey. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that had been cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is an interesting scripture text because it is the only place in the Gospels that tell us that Jesus rode a donkey. Nowhere else do we find that Jesus rode a donkey. What's all this about? Jesus was fulfilling scripture. The prophet Zechariah said these words. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, 
your king comes to you triumphant and victorious as he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Zechariah spoke these words 500 years before Jesus was born. Jesus got on the donkey. He rode down the Mount of Olives and into the city of Jerusalem. It was Passover time. There were over 200,000 people in the city of Jerusalem. It must have been almost impossible to pass through the narrow streets. People learned that Jesus was approaching the city. And the multitudes lined up along the road. And some people threw their cloaks on the road before Jesus. And some threw branches before Jesus. And everyone was shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna means save us. Keep in mind, it is Passover. During Passover, the Jews celebrate their freedom, their deliverance as slaves when they were in Egypt. They remember how they were set free. The people who lined up along the street were thinking, this is the Messiah. Save us. Save us from Roman oppression. Set us free from those who rule over us. Establish the kingdom of Israel. Restore Israel to her glory days. The disciples were thinking that Jesus was about to establish his political kingdom on earth. Everyone had a different concept of what was happening that day, including the Pharisees. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 39, we read, Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Now, why was it that the Pharisees Ask the disciples to tell the crowds to quit shouting. They feared the Romans. The Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, was in town with his Roman soldiers. And they were there to remind the people if they got out of hand during Passover, they would be crushed. The Pharisees feared what the Romans might do to them. Jesus rode into the city, and Luke provides another interesting point of information about what happened that day. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they're hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you. They will not leave within you one stone upon another because you do not recognize the time of your visitation from God. You did not recognize the time of of your visitation from God. Jesus wept as he went into the holy city because he knew he would be rejected. He knew what was coming. And his words were fulfilled when Romans came in 70 AD and destroyed Jerusalem, slaughtered many people, and took other people captive. Why is this story so important for us? Because it reminds us that Jesus willingly rode into the city of Jerusalem to sacrifice his life for our sins. 
No one in the crowd could see this. The Pharisees, the other religious leaders, did not understand this. The disciples of all the people who followed Jesus for three years did not understand what Jesus was about to do. Jesus was about to complete his mission on earth. We are now facing Holy Week. On Monday, Thursday, we will remember how Jesus gathered with the disciples in the upper room. They celebrated the Seder meal, and Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. And on Good Friday, we remember how Jesus sacrificed his life for the sins of the world, for your sins, for my sins. So that we might have eternal life. Jesus willingly did this for us. Whenever you think the world is spinning out of control, remember Jesus. Remember what Holy Week is all about. This is a week of sorrow and tears and pain. But it is also a week that will end with triumph and with victory. In Philippians, Jesus is described with these words. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. It's important to listen to the news and see what's happening around us during this global pandemic, but it is imperative it is imperative that we stop and we listen to the voice of God. God is speaking to us during this time. God is reminding us that he loves us and he cares about us. And that this too will come to pass. He's here to hold our hands. God is here to give us strength and courage to face each day. And as we turn our thoughts upon the Palm Sunday Parade, when Jesus made his triumphant entry to Jerusalem, we are reminded Jesus died for us. Jesus willingly went into a city where people would arrest him and beat him and hang him on a cross for us. Let us pray. God, today on Palm Sunday and throughout Holy Week, let us remember the story of Jesus and all that he endured for us, for our salvation, to forgive our sins, to give us the gift of eternal life. Jesus is greater than all the bad things, the evil things, the sinful things that are happening in the world. Jesus is greater than this coronavirus. Jesus was able to calm the angry sea. He said, peace be still. And the waters became calm. Jesus, speak to our hearts, speak to our lives. Speak to our fears and calm all the angry things around us and in us and fill us with your peace. In Christ's name.
Amen.
Dennis, and we have a photographer with us today, Cynthia, thank you. I just want to remind you that I continue to pray for you. I pray for our church. I pray that this virus is going to be conquered. And I know you're praying for that as well. Uh, we'll be back with you for Monday, Thursday, and for Good Friday, and of course for Easter. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.